So hello everyone and welcome to our white gift service. I'm so glad that you're here this evening. It's a, it's a wonderful tradition that we're able to share and even though it looks different than it normally does this year, we will still have our children's church program uh, leading and, and working with, our, with us for the service today. I'm so grateful to all of our kids that they are agreed to take part. They didn't look at me and go, ah, you're crazy, Reverend Janelle and that you're able to and willing to take part. I'm also glad that the rest of you are here, whether you're joining us in Zoom or on Facebook or whether you're watching it later on, on, uh, on YouTube or on our website or on Facebook. Wherever you find us, I am so glad that you do. A couple of quick announcements. A reminder that church on Sunday is at 11.30, both this week and next. Next Friday night, we're doing kind of Fridays and Saturdays for the next, or Fridays and Sundays for the next couple of weeks. So next Friday night is our Blue Christmas service at seven o'clock, same link and everything. If, you, uh, if you're if you finding that this Christmas season is a, a little bit heavier and that you're finding maybe that you're not as joyful as you feel like Christmas is supposed to be, the Blue Christmas service is a night of of um, a little bit quieter and candlelight and just taking that moment to recognize that sometimes we do feel sorrow even in the midst of a joyful story. So I hope you'll join us for that if you so desire. Christmas Eve will be here at seven o'clock and I hope you'll join us for that as well. Our music tonight is played by a whole bunch of our wonderful musicians from across our pastoral charge. And our music is reproduced with permission under license number A609189 of One License LLC. And so I'm glad that you're here and hopefully you'll be able to sing and, and uh, share in the story with us. We begin our worship this evening as is our tradition by acknowledging the territory on which we worship tonight. As we begin, we remember that we are not the only people who have lived in this area. Long before our ancestors, grandparents, and great-grandparents lived here, this land was known by many different indigenous groups. The Lakota, Dakota, Nakota, Soto, Cree, and Métis peoples called this place home, and all of our ancestors signed a treaty, which is a promise about how people will live together in peace. Over the years, our ancestors were not very nice to indigenous peoples and did not live in peace like they promised. So today, as people of the church, we apologize and remind ourselves and each other to live better with each other like Jesus taught us to do. Our call to worship this morning is going, or this evening, I'm going to be doing that a lot, I think. We're not, I'm not used to having church at night. Our call to worship this evening is by Georgia, and I'm going to ask her to unmute herself. Okay. Come and worship. Today we come to remember the story of Jesus' birth and to celebrate all that he taught us. We remember that God so loved the world and wanted to be in a relationship with people that Jesus was born as a tiny baby and grew up like us. So come, let us worship this amazing, surprising God. Thank you, Georgia. And Dawson's going to tell us a little bit about why we, why we light the Advent candles, and then the other kids of the Children's Church are going to tell us what each candle means. As we get closer to Christmas, we light our Advent candles. Advent means coming, and we are so excited that Jesus is coming into the world. So we light the candles of hope, peace, joy, and love, and then on Christmas Eve, we light our Christ candle to celebrate that Jesus is born. Today, today we will light all five candles so that we can remember what they all mean. Uh, our first, first Advent candle is going to be lit by Peyton. We light the candle of hope. This candle is to remind us 
even when the world seems like a really bad place, we have hope in God and Jesus. We have hope in God and Jesus brings us hope. And our other Peyton. Hold on one second, hon. I gotta find you. There you are. All right. Okay. We light the candles of peace. This candle is to remind us that we call Jesus Price, Prince, Prince of Peace, and He te teaches us of peace that God gives us deep in our hearts. Thank you. Justin, will you tell us a little bit about the next candle? Mm -hmm. We light the candle of joy. We light the candle of joy. This candle. This candle. Is to remind. Is to remind, remind us about. Us about. The wonderful joy. Wonderful joy. Jesus brings. Jesus brings. To the world. To the world. Thank you. We light the candle of love. This candle is to remind us about the love of God and has the world and God has for the world and the way Jesus teaches us to love others. Thank you. And Gabe is gonna tell us about our last candle. We light our Christ candle to remember that the light of Jesus' life will always be around and within us, too. Now, let's, si let's sing our Advent hymn called Hope is a Star. Thank you. Thank you all. What a beautiful Advent wreath we have. God, as we worship today, we ask that you would that you would help us learn about and practice the hope, peace, joy, and love that Jesus brings. Please remind us that you are always near and help us know your love. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesse. So I wanted to share the Christmas story with you today from the Lectionary Story Bible by Ralph Milton. Do you all remember back in, in the spring and the summer, I was reading stories out of here for you? And 
back at the very beginning when I started reading the stories, I asked Ralph if I could give, get his permission. Because when you use something that's online, that's not your own work, it's always a good idea to get permission. So I asked Ralph if I could do that. And he said, absolutely, it would be all right if I shared those stories with you. And so this is, uh, this is a story from his book. And these are his words that tell how Jesus came into the world. Mary was unhappy. She was worried and she was very afraid. You see, Mary was pregnant. She was going to have a baby and she was very glad about the baby because of a dream. At least to Mary, it seemed like a dream. Or maybe it wasn't a dream. Maybe it was real. Whatever it was, Mary knew that an angel had told her the baby was going to be very special. The baby was going to help show God's love to everyone. But Mary was also afraid. Those day, the, but Mary was also afraid because in those days, people got very angry when a woman had a baby before she was married. Sometimes they got so angry, they threw stones at the woman until they killed her. Mary was happy about the baby, but was, she was afraid that her family and friends would be very angry at her. So Mary went to visit her cousin Elizabeth. The angel had told Mary that Elizabeth was also going to have a baby, even though Elizabeth was very old, much too old to have a baby. It was a very long walk to Elizabeth's house, but Mary knew Elizabeth would understand. Elizabeth would not be angry. When, Mary, when Elizabeth saw Mary coming down the path, Elizabeth's baby started moving in her womb. It was almost as if the baby was glad to see Mary coming. Mary and Elizabeth gave each other a long hug. They cried a little and they laughed. Mary, really just a teenager, and Elizabeth, an older woman, and both of them were going to have babies. After they talked for a long time, they had something to eat and drink. And then when it was starting to get dark, they sat outside under a tree where it was nice and cool. Mary sang a song for Elizabeth. It was an old song that had been sung many, many years before by a woman named Hannah. My heart is so glad. My heart is so full. My heart is so wonderfully blessed. My God has shown love. My God is so strong. My God cares for those who are poor. My God feeds the hungry. My God helps the poor. My God sends the rich ones away empty. God remembers our people, our families, our friends. God's promise lives in us today. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for many days. They talked about their babies. Elizabeth took Mary's hand and held it against her big tummy. Mary could feel the baby move inside. The two women talked about God and God's promise of a chosen one. I think God has a special dream for both our babies, said Elizabeth. One day, Mary decided to go back home. People might still be angry about her baby, but she felt much stronger after her time with Elizabeth. Mary's friend Joseph still wanted to marry her and to be a father to her baby. It would still be hard, but Mary could feel God's love. She knew things would be all right. Mary's tummy was getting very big. She could feel her baby move inside her. It wouldn't be long before her baby would be born. Then one day, Joseph came in from his shop where he made furniture for people. Bad news, Mary, he said. The soldiers came and told me all of us have to go to the place where we were born. They want to count how many people live in Israel. But you were born in Bethlehem, said Mary. That's a long way from Nazareth. I know, and it's going to be even harder for you because our baby is almost ready to be born. Do we have to go? asked Mary. Joseph nodded, yes. <sighs> then let's get ready, sighed Mary. I hope the baby isn't born while we're on the road. So Mary and Joseph packed clothes and some food and some clothes for the baby that Mary could feel moving in her womb. It was a long walk. Sometimes Mary rode on the donkey, but that made her feel sick. Please, baby, Mary said to herself, please don't come until we get to Bethlehem, where we can find a nice warm room to stay in. But when they got to Bethlehem, there was no room. 
The whole town was crowded with other people who had come to be counted. Joseph knocked on many doors, but nobody had any room for them. The best I could find was in the place where they keep the animals, said Joseph. It isn't very clean and it's smelly, but at least the cold wind won't blow on us. Mary began to cry. She was so very, very tired and she knew the baby was ready to be born. Well, let's go. Now we have to hurry. The baby is starting to come. Joseph helped Mary lie down gently on the straw beside the animals. It hurt when the baby was born. Mary cried. She wanted her mother to be with her. Sometimes she even screamed it hurt so much. But then the baby came and Joseph held it tenderly in his arms. He found some warm water and washed the baby clean. And that's how the baby Jesus came to be born in a place where only animals were usually born. Mary smiled when Joseph gave the baby to her. A little while later, when Mary put the baby up to her breast, little Jesus began to suck and Joseph smiled too. They felt happy, even though they were both very tired. A few hours later, they heard some people talking outside. Then a man walked in the door. He looked around as if he was very mixed up. When he saw Mary and Joseph and Jesus, he walked over to them. His eyes opened really wide. Is this the chosen one, he asked. Mary and Joseph looked at each other, then at the man. Yes, said Joseph, but how did you know? We were in the fields looking after our sheep. It was the middle of the night. The shepherd stopped. His mouth opened a few times, but no words came out. He was trying to talk about something that was so wonderful, he couldn't find the right words to tell about it. There were bright things all over the sky, he said after a while. And there was music all around us. Some of the shepherds said it was angels singing. The shepherd looked at little Jesus. Can I bring my friends in to see? Joseph looked at Mary. She nodded. The shepherd went to the door and called to his friends, come in, come in and see this wonderful child. Five more people came in through the door. One of them was just the boy. He walked right up to the baby. Could I hold him, he asked. Mary smiled at him. I think it would be better if I held him, she said, but come close and you can see his face. The boy came close, the baby opened his eyes. Oh, said the boy, his, he has dark eyes, just like mine. What's his name? His name is Jesus, said Mary. The boy grinned from ear to ear. That's my name too, he grinned. That's my name too. And do you know what that name Jesus means, asked Mary? It means, the boy looked around at his father. It means God will save us, doesn't it? He looked at his father again, who smiled and nodded. Mary and Joseph also smiled. Come, said the shepherds, the shepherd said to his son. Little Jesus and his parents are very tired and they need rest. And we have to go back and look after our sheep. After Jesus was born, Mary and Joseph stayed in Bethlehem for quite a while. They were waiting for Mary to feel stronger and for Jesus to get a little bigger before they went back to their home in Nazareth. Being born is very hard work for both the mother and the baby. In a country far away, a bright star shone up in the sky. Some magi saw the star. Magi are sometimes called wise men or wise ones or kings. That bright star means something important is happening, said one of the magi. It's happening in a faraway land. We should go and see. Yes, said one of the other magi. When a bright star appears in the sky, it means that a king is born. So they loaded food and clothes onto their camels. Then they started off. As they walked along, the star seemed to move ahead of them. I think the star is leading us somewhere, said one of the magi. So they followed the star. It led them to Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, they went to see King Herod. We have been following a bright star. We think the star is leading us to a new king who has just been born. Do you know where that king is? We brought him some gifts. Herod began to feel afraid. Would this baby become king instead of him? Herod was very smart and didn't tell anyone that he was afraid. 
Instead, he just smiled and said to the Magi, I'll find out for you. Then he left the Magi and called together all the smart people he knew. He asked them, do you know where the new king is supposed to be born? Sure we know. We have some old books that tell us these things. If a new king was born, it would have been in the town of Bethlehem. Herod went back to the Magi. He smiled nicely to hide his fear. The new king was born in Bethlehem, he told them. Isn't that wonderful? Why don't you go and find him? Give him your gifts and then come back and tell me where he is. I want to take him some gifts too. We'll do that, said the Magi. Thanks for your help. So they went to Bethlehem, which isn't very far from Jerusalem. They gave Jesus the special gifts they had brought with them, shining gold, sweet smelling incense, and a perfume called myrrh. That night, one of the Magi had a dream, a really bad dream. He shook the other Magi and said, wake up. I had a dream that King Herod wants to hurt the baby Jesus. We must not go back to tell Herod where the baby is. We have to go back home, but we should take a different road that doesn't go by Herod's castle. We've got to leave right now. And that's the story of the baby Jesus, his mom and his dad, and all the different people who came to see him. Sometimes we think that they must have all come the same night, but you know, the shepherds were pretty close and probably did. The Magi, I think it probably would have taken them a while to get where they were going and to find the baby Jesus. He probably wasn't much of a baby anymore. He was probably more of a toddler. But whatever and whenever they got there, I know that they were very excited to talk about and to see and to tell everyone about this person, this little baby Jesus that they had just met. Our next hymn is going to be a, a story. You know, sometimes we tell the Christmas story by telling it in books like this. And sometimes we tell the Christmas story by singing about it. So our next hymn is going to be number 69 in Voices United, if you have it. It's called Away in a Manger. <laughs> things differently than we're used to doing them. And so usually when we would be in church, you guys would all come and you would take part and we do it in our own churches, right? We'd do some in La Flash and some in Limerick and you'd all go to your same church and then we'd tell a Christmas story together. But we had to do things differently. And so I asked you all to take to make videos and answer some questions for me. And then I asked my sister for help because my sister is really good at technology and making all that sort of thing work out. And I'm not so good at it. So she helps us, she helps me put this all together so that all of your words, well, not all of your words. Sometimes I had to cut things down because if we wanted it to be in any reasonable amount of time, we didn't, we didn't need to have everybody on there. 
but your words are going to make this video. So I want to show this to you. And that way we can tell everybody what children's church or what the children's church group feels Christmas is all about. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! What is Christmas about? For me, it's about joy, peace, and Jesus' birth and the way he wanted us to live. Je Jesus' birthday. Getting presents. Getting presents? Mm hmm It's about when Jesus is born. Can you tell the Christmas story from the very beginning? So, Mary and Joseph were told by the angel Gabriel that they were going to have baby Jesus. And so they rode on camels and donkeys to Bethlehem. So, and then they couldn't afford to stay at an inn or a motel. So they had to rent a uh, shepherd's stable. Mm -hmm. And when Jesus was born, the three wise men, some shepherds, and Mary and Joseph and the angel Gabriel was watching it. If you could be any character in the Christmas story, who would you be? Mary. The baby Jesus, I love it. What do you think will be different about Christmas this year? Uh, I don't know. There won't be as many people gathered together. Um, not as many families will be driving places to see their families and not as many people can go, um, can get together. So probably there will be less accidents on the road. Lots of times we'll have a little bit of family come out and this time we can't really do that because of COVID, so. What are you excited for this Christmas? I'm just excited for the Christmas season and Christmas cookies and being happy and Christmas Eve because I like Christmas Eve. I don't know. Santa! Gifts, family, and the food. All the food. When the presents come. Decorating the tree. Presents! Do you like the Christmas season? I like the snow because you build snowmen and go skidooing and I like getting gifts and eating the food on Christmas. That's what I always said. Uh, I like the holidays, but I don't really like the weather because it's always cold. But, oh, I really like the cold. But we get to spend time with family and stuff like that and get to have lots of yummy food. <laughs> I really like sledding and sliding on ice. I like the Christmas season and the best part about it is the, like, it just gives me a good feeling. <laughs> uh, having a break from school. What are some of your favorite holiday traditions? Putting up the tree, decorating the house, um, making cookies. Eating lots and lots and lots and lots of stuffing. Making the gingerbread houses and making a big meal. Probably how we usually go to Saskatoon. Yeah. Or how we celebrate Ukrainian Christmas. Turn up the Christmas tree. So can you tell me a bit about Jesus and why we make such a big deal of his birthday? Um, because he is the reason for the season. Because if he was just so tiny and he was a baby. Mm -hmm. Boy. Mm -hmm. And he don't love that when he was a baby dog. Because he helped other people and he, and he thought that it was good that other people should be treated kind all the time. So Jesus was a man that was born in a stable and so he uh, brought good to all the world and he was really special and his birthday is special because he is special and so that's why we celebrated a whole bunch. What does Christmas mean to you? Um, it means bringing the family together and just having a good time. 
it's one of the few times of the year where family can get together and have a big celebration. Happy. That's a food. Jesus, church, food, family, and gifts, I guess. If you could describe Christmas in just one word, what would it be? The best season ever. Or awesome. Joyful. Well, there we go. That's what Children's Church thinks Christmas is all about. So let's sing again. We're going to sing another song that tells us about the Christmas story. This one is called The Virgin Mary Had a Baby Boy. going to tell us a little bit about our offering today. Jesus gave us the best gift of all when he came to earth and taught us to live, with love for God and other people. So today we think about all the gifts we give back to Jesus. 
We can be time, talents, gifts, or money to the church or to other things that God cares about. For this service, we usually bring our weight gifts, which are things that we donate to help other people. This year is a bit different, and we can't bring them forward to put under the tree, but you can drop them off at the one with post office or contact Reverend Janelle, and we'll make sure they get where they need to go. As we think about the things that we give, and do to share God's love, let's sing our offering hymn. What can I do? Georgia is going to lead us in our prayers for the people. Okay. Uh, dear God, thank you for giving us Jesus who teaches us how to live. Today we pray for ourselves, the other people we know, and for the whole world. We pray for ourselves. Sometimes we are full of joy and sometimes we are really sad or mad or lonely. And we give thanks, God, that we can tell you all of what we are feeling. Help us to live the way that Jesus taught us, loving you, our neighbors, and ourselves. We pray for people we know. God, we pray for everyone we know, the people we love and the people we find it hard to like. We pray that in this Christmas time, they might know the hope, peace, joy, and love that you give the world. And we pray for the whole world. We ask that you be with everyone who is hurting in any way, God, whether in body, spirit, or mind, help us learn as a human race to help one another and live in peace. Help us to treat your world well and care for all creation. All this we pray in Jesus' name and with the words he taught his disciples long ago, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Georgia. All right, one last song. This one's a, a fun one to sing. It tells us a little bit about what the shepherds might have been thinking that night when the angels tell them to go tell it on the mountain, number 43.
that you guys all came today. I'm so glad that you're here and that we get to share the Christmas story with you. So I hope that you go from this place to celebrate the birth of Jesus, who brings us hope and peace and joy and love to the world. And as you go, go knowing that you are loved by God, walking beside Jesus and guided by the Holy Spirit today and always. Amen.